Hello, 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 that's right, I'm back, I got my regular microphone working again, no more of that terrible audio quality, yeah! Woo! And if this is your first time tuning into the podcast, my name is JT and welcome to the People's Paradise Podcast! Man, I want to thank you so much for pressing the play button. I want to thank you so much for enjoying your boy. It's a pleasure to get behind this microphone and know that there's people out there who really tune in to me, who really feel what I'm saying, man. It's a great feeling. Welcome, man. Welcome. Thank you, man. You don't know how happy I am to have this microphone and equipment working again. God, man. It feels so good, man. I... I was so tired of giving you terrible audio quality. You know, I got 13 million people listening to this. I don't want any one of them to go back and say JT has not provided me with the quality that I want. And I promise you, on my mama's head, I'm going to give you a good one today. What's been going on with you? Me, I've been ultimately blessed. Ultimately blessed in my I said ultimately. I've been ultimately blessed in my life. Um... I just recorded a really good Facebook Live talking about the subject I'm about to hop into with Entertainment Board, and um, uh, that went well. My computer is not officially working correctly yet. I just happened to get the, um, I happen to have the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I have the hard drive to fix. I have to fix the hard drive, so I'm going to have to buy a new hard drive. But what I'm going to do is, I got a, um, my auntie got a homeboy. He's going to hook me up with a new hard drive, so we're going to work on that. But I got that working. I got the microphone working. So I'm going to have the great auto quality. I'm happy about that. I got a little bit of money in my pocket because my birthday is in two days. Shout out to that. My birthday is in two days. That's going to be cool. And I'm, I'm kind of, I'm trying to decide. I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do for it. I'm still not sure, you know, um. I had a conversation with my mom, and I hate to get all personal and everything before I start talking to you, but, you know, I have to talk about my life because that's just what happens all the time. So, I had a conversation with my mom, and, you know, she wants, my my biological father wants to take me, my mom, and my two sisters out to eat, and I'm assuming my other brother, too. And, I don't know if I told you before, but I guess I'll tell you again, um... My, you you know how it is. You go through those phases with your family members where you're not talking to them as much. You just have a little bit of distance. You know, maybe it's you trying to, maybe you're trying to better yourself. Maybe you're going to school. Maybe you're mad because they didn't buy you the extra pack of ramen noodles that you needed while you was in college in your dorm, and so you kind of salty about it. You know, either or, you have certain times where you just want to have some space from your family, and I've been having that lately because. Like I've told you before, when it comes to this podcasting thing and when it comes to this broadcasting thing, I'm the only person really putting in all my effort into this. Like, it's nobody who's helping me. And it should be like that. It should be something that's independent. It should be something that comes from the heart. And it should be something that you make off the off your own blood, sweat, and tears. But I would love some help. And with my family... I feel kind of upset because I feel like I have nobody standing up for me, nobody backing me up on this. And you know what it is what it is. I just have to deal with that. I have to deal with that because I want to be great. And so I can't wait for somebody to verify and assist me to be great. I just have to make the step, take the steps myself. And so I haven't been talking to my family as of late. But my biological father told my mother to tell me, you know, hey, you know, it's my son. That's my junior. That's my blood. I want to take him out. I want to take him out for his birthday or whatever, whatnot. And so I feel, I feel, I feel a little bit of ways about it. You know, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I want to do it because I, because I just, I don't know. Like I, I don't feel comfortable with. I just don't feel comfortable hanging around people that much right now when I'm trying to, when I'm trying to better myself, when I'm trying to get better, when I'm trying to achieve my dreams right now. Um, I don't know. You know, what do you think I should do? Do you think I should go with them? Do you think I should say yes? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I'll make the decision soon. We know. I'll talk to them about it later on, and we'll we'll go. We'll see where it goes from there. But I don't know. I'm. We'll see. I, I don't know. Because it's either go out with them or take my money and go to this Brazilian restaurant and go out there and eat. 
You know, either or could happen. Matter of fact, but anyway, we're going to hop into the entertainment board. Okay, matter of fact, hold up. But before I hop into the entertainment board, let me call somebody. Call somebody I'm going to talk to. So, my aunt right now, my aunt, um, she faked on me today. And we were supposed to go jogging this morning. And she just faked on me. And she thought I forgot about it. But, okay, I'm going to call her right now. Here we go. Because I'm, I'm mad she faked on me. I'm gonna call her right now before I get into the entertainment board. I'm gonna call talk. I'm gonna talk to her right now before I get into the entertainment board. I'm mad because I'm trying to be healthy and keep on my health life, and she gonna fake on me and not pick up the phone. I called twice and left a message and text. Oh, uh, hello. Yeah, no, I have my phone off. Okay, yep. Yeah, hold up. This is my aunt right now. This is my aunt Margarita Holman. Anyway, auntie, this is actually recording this time when I called you. Okay, now now you want to okay now you want now you want to talk white. Okay, fine. Okay, <laughs> no phone talking. I'll call you back because I have a meeting. Okay, I'm done. And that was my aunt Margarita Holman. Uh, she faked on me. She's actually a really great woman, a business owner, business owner, talented person, great person. Um, shout out to her. You know what? Before I before I get to the entertainment board, I'm gonna call one more person. I'm gonna call my uncle. I'm gonna call my uncle Tinky. See, if he, see, record. Talk to him on the phone. See. See right now. Now this guy, he's a really great guy. You know, he's pretty famous in his neighborhood. You know, he made his own security company. I watched him myself beat up four or five people. I watched him myself drag full grown men out the club and throw them on the ground like sacks. So I'm gonna tell you, he's a really, really talented man. In fact, I might hire him to be my when I get to a certain amount of fame. I might hire him to be my bodyguard. You know, just because I have such trust and faith in his ability as a fighter. Just because I have such trust in. I'll be back in contact with you as soon as I can. Thank you again. Okay. He, okay. They, they, see, I'm going to tell you what happened. He knew I was going to call him, so he, he ignored the call. So I apologize about that. Anyway, stop him. I'm going to stop being silly. Let's get let's get into what's going on in the world today. Um, entertainment board, entertainment board. Okay. Uh, news today. Um, Let's see what's going on in the news today. Shout out to... Shout out to everybody who listened to me on my Facebook Live, the video I just did a minute ago. That was pretty cool. Mm, that was pretty cool. I had a good time talking to my friends on there. Let's go to it right now with the um, entertainment board. What's going on with the entertainment board? Um, Entertainment board right here. Okay, so there's a tweet trending right now. It's hella funny. It's called Cap So Black. And it's basically, it's based off of the football player Colin Kaepernick because, you know, if you don't know and if you're not from the United States, you might not be familiar with this. So I'm just going to tell you and explain what's going on. Um, but shout out to my man Colin Kaepernick. Um, basically what's going on is there's a protest. He's doing his own protest where in the NFL football games, when they have that period of time where the football players stand up and raise their hands and put their hands on their chest for the United States National Anthem. Instead of him raising up and putting his hand on the chest like everybody does, he's decided that he's sitting it down. He's sitting down during the national anthem. He's deciding that he doesn't respect the national anthem because it's a national anthem to a country that's oppressed black people even to this day for four to five hundred years, and he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to um, support that. And in the last four to five days, he has received countless hate mail, countless attacks on his name, countless, countless. There's a lot. He's received a lot of hate, but equally, he's received a lot of support from black people. And I hate to say that on a racial divide, like it's only black people supporting him. But in reality, it really is only black people supporting him. And one guy has joined him, too. Shout out to my man, Jeremy Lane of the Seattle Seahawks. Um, he's joined him, too, in the protest. You know, shout out to both those young brothers out there really showing America how we can stand united. And so there's a tweet going on right now called Cap So Black because he he's, he came back onto the football field. Now he has his big ass afro. He has his hella big afro and he's just all. It's just, you, you, you can just go online and Google a picture of Colin Kaepernick and you'll see this big afro he got now. And so now you have all these tweets talking about Cap So Black. One guy got on the one guy, for example, shout out to at Kev Mo Kevlar Comedy. 
He tweeted, Kev so black, this is the new 49ers uniform. And it's a Gandhi Gashiki with a San Francisco patch in the middle of it. Uh, another guy tweeted a picture of this old, cla- very, very classic um, black program called Soul Train. And it said, Caps are black. There will be a Soul Train scramble during halftime. Uh, shout out to Hei Cheng Yi Hei. She tweeted out, Caps are black. He got pink lotion in his lock. <laughs> and if you don't know what that is, um, black people have this thing where, especially of black women, we put we put particular pot pot products in our hair there's particular products that in black culture or are very iconic like one thing that's very iconic in our culture is um murray's hair grease smooth waves and pink lotion those things are very very iconic in black culture very iconic um shout out to jacqueline mcgray she said cap so black he slaps on a satin bonnet before putting on his helmet <laughs> shout out to hobby monster cap so black he has a set of these hanging up in his kitchen Okay, now this one I'm going to have to explain to you in detail. There's another thing about black culture where I'd say most of our grandmothers, most of our grandmothers um, have, most of our grandmothers like to decorate their houses. And one of the decorations that all of them had, like all our grandmothers had, was these this big ass wooden spoon and this big ass wooden fork and they would hang them on the wall and that would be the um that would be the um ooh, throat star nerd and that would be the um that would be like the kitchen decoration and that's a really common thing i explain that terribly forget it cops are black he has a bunch of double a batteries in his freezer shout out to say gm <laughs> cops are black Okay, this guy tweeted a picture of a big ass bag of plastic bags in one bag and said, Cap so black. Actual footage of the cabinet under the cabinet kitchen sink. Man, now that's funny. You know, because black people have this thing where we never throw away grocery bags. We literally take all the grocery bags and put them in one bag. Although that might be a black and white thing. I don't think that's just a thing that black people do. You know what? Tweet me. If you're a white person right now, or if you're a Chinese person, or if you're a Japanese person, Brazilian, Colombian, Argentinian, Tahitian, etc., I want you to tweet me and tell me, is that a black thing, or is that something that all of us do? You know, tell me. I'm curious to hear what you have to say about that. And Cap so black, he wants to know who made potato salad. Cap so black, he has a fridge full of leftovers stored in Country Rock butter containers. That's a good one. Now, that's black. That's black for you. That's black for you. You know, I want to thank all of you, the people who I just named, the people who I just shouted out on Twitter. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to turn such a, I'd say, hostile, racial dividing situation like this into something that's humorous and fun. Because, you know, we can get so we can get so serious sometimes with we can get so serious and so focused on whose side are you on? Why are you supporting them? Why this? Why that? That we don't just take the time to enjoy. We don't just take the time to kind of, you know, laugh about moments and come together. This isn't a situation, granted, that you should be laughing too much about. But I do appreciate that you guys took your time, took your creativity to make it humorous. I really appreciate that. With Colin Kaepernick, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this basically in my opinion. Um, I don't think there's nothing wrong with what Colin Kaepernick is doing. I think it's right. And I've seen a lot of people attack him on Twitter. I've seen a lot of people attack him on Facebook. I've seen a lot of people attack him on the blogs. I don't think there's anything wrong with what Colin Kaepernick is doing. I just don't like how they're so focused on it being a race issue. It's not a race issue. He's not blaming white people. He's blaming the establishment. It's two different things, man. And another thing about this, too, because... There's a, there's a really popular news program anchored by Tommy Lauren as a conservative news program on the blaze. And she did this three minute rant talking about, um, Cola Kaepernick. And she said, she said some of the most hateful shit I've ever heard come out of a girl's mouth. Like she was saying, Oh, so you're half, she said, and how can you care about white people? You're half white. Did black people support you when your white parents made you? What about that white owner that's paying you, that's paying you? Colin Kaepernick, the day he started the sit outs, the day he started the sit down, I mean, the day he started the sit down, he released a, he, he released a, um, he released a statement 
written and spoken. He never blamed white people. He, I don't think he never even mentioned white people. He just was saying, you know, this country is oppressing black people and I don't like that. Now, what does that, and even if, even if he is half white, what does that have to do with being a person who cares about human morals? Like, I honestly, like, first off, this is going to be the last time I bring up Tommy Lauren on this podcast because I feel like she is just, she's just one of those people. I'm telling you right now, Tommy Lauren is one of those people who just likes to, um, she likes to race base. She likes to say little stuff to, to get ratings because she doesn't have, the, Tommy Lauren is one of those type of people who, because she doesn't have any talent as a speaker or as a communicator, she has to say certain bait, race bait and shit to get views, to get likes, to get subscriptions. It just is what it is. And I, I accept that about her. I accept that she has to do that. You know, some of it, for the, for the, for the lesser talented of us, mm, sorry, I need to drink some water, man, my throat dry. For the lesser talented of us, for the lesser talented of us, you know, we have to do little, we have to be resorted to little tricks like that. So I, I can understand. Now, to slide off of that issue, because I don't want to focus on that, that stupid B word. Um, um, what am I going to say? Next thing I'm going to go to, we're going to the next topic before I talk on her and get mad. I mean, I was already kind of mad, but before I get madder. Um, next thing we're going to talk about is, um, oh yeah, this is something Okay, this is something that's really out of my expertise, totally, totally out of my expertise as a podcaster, as a sportsman and everything. But I decided I wanted to talk about it because I know a lot of, if it, I sorry, I keep saying plural. I know you, you might be a football fan because I noticed a couple of my fans, like I've said before countless times, they're from different countries. They're from places where football is really popular. I'm talking about soccer, football. And I thought this would be a funny subject for, to bring up for you. Um, there's a video game really popular called FIFA 17 came out on PS4, it's coming out on Xbox uh, 720 or whatever it's called nowadays. And in the, <laughs> and in the game, um, in the game you have Ronaldo, you have the three top tier players in the game, which is Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, and my boy Neymar Jr. Shout out to Neymar. I like Neymar not just because of his playing, because I really don't watch him play. I don't really, I don't really watch sports like that at all. I love playing sports. I hate watching them, but I like Neymar's style. Like he's one of those type of flashy, cool type of guys. Who's, he's like a sock. He's like a Usain Bolt of soccer when it comes to how flashy and stylish he is. Or a Mario Balotelli of soccer. Shout out to Mario Balotelli too. But they said that Ronaldo, by the stats in the video game, Ronaldo is better than Lionel Messi. Now, if you're listening to me right now and you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's pretty much agreed by sports analysts throughout the world that Lionel Messi <clears throat> is the best is the best um is the best soccer player out there right now. And you know, I I, I don't know, I can't tell. I'll just tell I I want to know what you think. I want you to comment and let me know what do you think. You can tweet me at JT's Boldest Dream, JTS, B O L D E S T D R, yeah, yeah. Also, you can Instagram me at JT's Boldest Dream, that's JTS, B O L D E S T D R, yeah, yeah. And you can also like my Facebook page at Dream for You Publishings, Dream for You Publishings. And we can have the conversation there. Now, my personal opinion about this, and I'll be real with you, I can't tell the difference. Only thing I will tell you is, I don't know if Ronaldo is a better player than Lionel Messi, but he sure is a better looking. That is a beautiful man. Let's give a round of applause for that. God bless the two creatures that got together in a, in a wild forest somewhere and made him. That's a very beautiful man. God damn, I would never let him come around, my, me and my girlfriend. I mean, I would be assuming that I had one. So, you know, a lot of factors would have to, a lot of factors of fate would have to shift for me to have that. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Shout out to them. Anyway, let's get to the next topic. Oh, okay, this was this one was way out of the way out of there. Oh, shout out to my cousin Cedric. He just messaged me a lot. He just messaged me right now. Matter of fact, I might call him and have him on this podcast right now. Just have a conversation with him. Think I should? I've been trying so hard to get guests. You know, I'll call him later on. I'll call him later on. We'll talk. We'll talk. You know what? What I'll do actually. What I'll do in that scenario is, um, 
I have I'm going to record my night podcast later on the night, you know, my late night episode. And what I'll do is I'll have this episode come out, which is coming out right now at 2 p.m. Sorry for being hour away. And my night episode is going to come out at 10 p.m. So I want you to I want you to tune into my night episode, man. I'm, I know you don't want to hear from me all day. I know you get tired of me at some at some point, but I never get tired of you. I want I want to ha- I want to have the conversation with you. I want to be part of your life. I can't be part of your life. Okay, if you're a guy and you're listening to me right now, that might have sounded just a little bit too homo. It is what it is. But anyway, um, <clears throat> let's get back into the game. Uh, this segment we're going to get into the show is called the Boy Stop. And the Boy Stop segment is basically a situation I'm going to bring up where the idiocracy in the situation is so obvious that I'm just like, Boy Stop. And if you're Brazilian, and if you're Brazilian, and you're listening to this podcast right now, I'm basically saying, "For the Sakara, no boa, no boa, no boa, no boa." Então, a gente vai falar. I mean, I mean, sorry. Um, anyway, we're going to have the conversation now. This situation I'm going to talk about is something else that you can find on Twitter because it's actually trending right now. Um, there was a study done. By plastic surgeons. And they said that they found the world's most desirable face. Oh, it was one plus. Oh, it was a one plastic surgeon. I apologize. Um, he, he is a plastic surgeon. I don't know his name. And he took. He basically took features from 1,000 of his patients to create the perfect face. Now, when I'm looking at the face, I'm noticing that a lot of them are celebrities who I doubt are his patients. But, you know, once again, you know, blame social media. Um, And I'm looking at the face right now, and this is supposed to be the perfect face. In other words, this is supposed to be the perfect face of beauty. Like, this is supposed to be the marker for what makes a beautiful woman. Um, I gotta be honest with you. Well, first, I'm gonna tell you what everybody else was saying. Uh, I'm gonna read a few other people's tweets who tweeted this. First, shout out to Twelve Dot Soul. He tweeted that moment when black people share that "fuck you" talking about face. Good hey, AOC. Shout out to Mary A. G. She said, "Steady show, haha." Sh- shout out to Dreams R R Real. He said, so glad we decided that this was bullshit across the board. Hashtag unity. I'm going to retreat you, my boy. That was funny. Shout out to Jordan Marie. She said, I'm crying laughing. Seriously, though, how do you decide the most desirable face? Shout out to Hobo. He said, that nasal tip rotation is everything. (laughs) What the hell does that mean? And it's an old ass dude who said this. His name is I Hobot at Electric Brother. Not Electric Brother. Electric Brother. Like old, that's one thing about old black people. I'm gonna tell you right now, old black people come up with the randomest shit to say. Like, damn, look at them, look at them heel bones. Well, bitch, how how was you looking at my heel bones? What the hell's wrong with you? Like, I mean, I'm I'm not even gonna get into it. But um, anyway, I hope I said that. Shout out to I hope I. As a matter of fact, I got an audio of um of Good Day DC's response to it. Let me see what this says. Okay, now, obviously, this is going to piss off women more than it pisses off men. And yeah, obviously, this is going to piss off women more than it pisses off men. And it's obviously going to piss off black women more than it pisses off any other sub subgroup of women because the features the the features that he's used are I quote I let me go back to what I said the features that he used to create this face are and I quote Jennifer Lopez's eyebrows Carrie Knightley's eyes Miley Cyrus's forehead 
Angelina Jolie's cheeks, Penelope Cruz's lips, Duchess of Cambridge's nose, Cher's jawline, and Selena Gomez's chin. He didn't spell Selena right in Selena Gomez's name, but okay, you know, I just, you know, I, I mean, I mean, hopefully the perfect woman knows how to spell. I mean, but anyway, um, I'm looking at this woman right now. She's a, okay, this, I guess it's not a human being, it's a sub, it's imagination. Um, she's a, it's a beautiful woman. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. It is a beautiful woman. It is a beautiful face. But it's far from the most desirable face. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's the most desirable face. I, I ain't going to lie to you like that. It is a beautiful face. It is a beautiful face, but I don't think it's the most desirable one. That, there's, that's pushing it way too far. I think it's... Oh, shoot. It's not the most desirable face. I think... I will say this. It might be the most agreeable face across the board. Because I think it is a face that if you went to other countries and took this face somewhere, you could still get some play from other people. You could still get some, you know, DD. But I don't, I'm trying to refrain from saying curse words on this podcast because I really wanted to get picked up by a big name sponsor. But I don't think, man, I don't think, I don't think, man, I don't feel like it's, um, I don't feel like it's the most beautiful face. And the thing about beauty, and I want you to tell me, matter of fact, before I hop on this, I want you to do me a favor. Tweet me at JT's Boldest Dream, J-T-S-B-O-L-D-E-S-T-D-R-E-A-M. After you take a look at this picture, after you take a look at the woman, just look out, just Google and Twitter, um, Google and Twitter, search on your Google most perfect face. And after you look at it, come back to me and tell me what you think about it. You can tell me on Twitter and you can tell me on Instagram. I've always said this, and I'm going to say it again. There's no such thing as the perfect image of beauty, and there's no such thing as a certain standard of beauty that every woman can abide by. Because I personally think that as far as in the entertainment world, Kim Kardashian is one of the most beautiful women that I've ever seen. I think she's one of the most beautiful women that in the entertainment world. But at the same time, you got to also think that Kim Kardashian has a type of beauty of her that wasn't appealing up until about maybe 10 years ago. It wasn't cute to have a big ass like that. It wasn't cute to have big hips, like big ass African hips like that. It wasn't cute to have full lips like that. I mean, it, it, that always has been kind of cool, but the way she has it, it wasn't. I do think there's a certain sketch of facial symmetry that women have that across all boards can be applied but as far as saying she has to have a certain woman's lip, I put it like this. Because this, this is what people are trying to say. I'm just going to keep it all the way honest with you. Being a white woman is not the perfection of feminine beauty. It's not the idea of feminine beauty. And if you're a white woman and you listen to this podcast right now, I'm not saying you're ugly. In fact, I think you're beautiful. I think all women are beautiful in their own ways, whether they're not as facially appealing as others. I think all women are beautiful. But at the same time, I don't think you can have one standard of beauty and say that's the best. Now, granted, because we live in a world where it is decide, it is dominated by people who are of more European descent, you're going to have a few people who, you're going to have more than, the, you're going to have a major majority who desires to see a white woman on the cover. Here, if you go to Africa, you'll see African models. If you go to the United States, you'll see American models. Really, if you go to, if you, now that I think about it, the United States is really ahead of the curve in a lot of ways because you can come to our country and see models from all over the damn place. We got models from Africa, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Brazil, Argentina. I've always said there's no such thing as a race that has the most beautiful women, but the country that has the most beautiful women is the United States because in your country, if you're listening to me right now or you're from a different country, your country might have beautiful women. Your country might have beautiful women. But I promise you the most beautiful of them have got a job working in this country. Whether it was a mod, whether it was being a model, whether it was being an actress, whether it was being a TV star, whether it was being a reality host, a journalist. They've come here and prospered nine times out of ten because they saw women like them on TV and were like, you know what? I could come to the United States and be um, bad um, and be bad and be bad too. So it is what it is. That's just my opinion. I want you to I want you to tell me what you think. I want you to tell me what do you think. 
You can tweet me at JT's Motors Dream, and you can also have the conversation with me on Instagram, or you can have this conversation with me on my Facebook. Either way, I'm, I'm open to conversation on, on all across the board. Yeah, you know, so it is what it is. Um, next thing we're going to do is go to the next topic, next topic. Next topic is... The we need Jesus moment. Okay. First off, um, before I get into this, I want to say, um, I know if this is a white person listening to this, if this is a black person listening to this, or if this is an Asian person listening to this, I know a lot of times in America, we're at a point, well, we're at a point now to where Black people are irritated on the whole, white people are irritated on the whole, and we're taking a lot of situations and we're comparing them to each other and we're justifying, we're justifying the reasoning behind it or justifying the injustice behind it as white privilege, racism, preconceived notions, um, black hate. We're just, we're, 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 we're reasoning with those, we're reasoning with those terms. And, there are some situations where it's just you being too sensitive and you're trying to throw racism out there. Then there's other situations where it's not race, it's blatant racism and you just don't see it. If you're a white person and you're listening to this podcast right now, if you're a white person, if you're a Chinese person, if you're a Mexican person, I want you to hear what I'm about to say right now and listen to me closely because this is a situation that pissed me off and it probably pissed you off too because I know you're a person of good morality. If you weren't a person of good morality, then you wouldn't be listening to this podcast right now. Um, there was a young man named Brock Turner. You might be familiar with the name. Brock Turner was a young man who raped a girl in an alleyway, left her body by a trash can, and you know went to court. went to court and only got six months in jail. Because the judge, the judge said, the judge, I forgot what the judge said. The judge said he made, the judge, for a lack of better words, said he made a mistake. You know, he made a mistake. He was a young kid. He don't want to, what is the term he used? Hold up. Funny you, because I want, I want to Google the actual term. But what I'm trying to get to is Brock Turner was, he faced 14 years for raping this girl, leaving her in the alleyway. The judge sentenced him to six months. Last night, he was released after three months for good behavior. Now, I am pissed off about that. I'm pissed off about that. A lot of people on Twitter are pissed off about that. I'm trying to remember what the judge said because I don't want to misquote. You know, I'm just going to tell you what my memory thinks. The judge had told him he don't he didn't the judge said he doesn't want him to have a bad have a bad um what was it a bad memory of college or he don't want him to have a bad this or that. I'm go I'm googling it right now. Hold on, let me let me google it right now. Okay, got it. The judge had said that he was worried that us that a stiffer a stiffer length of time in jail would have a severe impact on the twenty year old. And my response to that would be him raping a girl and leaving her in an alleyway by a trash can had a severe impact on her life. And there's going to be a more severe impact that she got raped and her rapist is out on in out of jail right now, just roaming the streets for no reason. Now, I'm upset about this because for one Black people don't get second chances like this. I'm just going to say it like that. A lot of people don't get second chances like this, but black people don't get second chances like this. And when I say it's racism is when I see a situation like that happen, but I can name you dozens of times when black people have went to jail for women lying on them, women who lied on them about them being raped. And when they got out of jail, they... When they got out of jail, when the person finally admitted that they relied on them, there was no, there was no, um, apology. There was no amount of money given to them for them to start their life back again. It just was, oh, well, okay, you, well, they lied on you, whatever. We suffer, black people suffer more in situations where we got lied on and people said we raped them 
than what than black than white people do when they have raped somebody and they can't like how can you how are you only getting three months for raping a person and leaving them in the alleyway? That makes no sense at all. And I'm gonna read some of the tweets that people are saying right now because I always like I always like to talk about what the people are saying. So let's go to what the people are talking about. Let's see what how are they feeling. Uh Brock Turner tweets. Let's go through it. Um, shout out to at Peg Zero One Two Three. She said, "What the f is wrong with this country and system?" Um, shout out to Lily Lily La Artista. I hope Brock Turner has a miserable life and ends up dead at a very early age. You know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't wish death on him, but he might commit suicide. Because one thing I have noticed with people like that who get a lot of second chances and who get offered terrible stuff. A lot of times it's not the visible, it's not the visible suffering that affects them the most, but the invisible suffering, the feelings that they're feeling on the inside of being considered a monster by millions of people across the country. He might commit suicide, bro. Eight La Wa, TGIF, especially for rapist Brock Turner, who fishing, finishes his joke of a sentence today. Shout out to Kurt Etchenwald. I guess Brock Turner got released for good behavior because he managed not to rape anyone during his three months in jail. You know what? That was genius. That was really genius. Shout out to Ailey at Arbathy in the USA. Three months of good behavior got Brock Turner released from jail. Meanwhile, a lifetime of good behavior got his victim. Well, we're drink. Well, were you drinking? That's terrible. Shout out to James Michael Sama. Is there a reason all the Brock Turner headlines start with former Stanford swimmer and not a convicted rapist? Let's not forget. Shout out to James Michael Sama. Repeat after me. Brock Turner is not former Stanford swimmer Brock Turner. Brock Turner is rapist Brock Turner. Mm. Like if you want this man to rot in jail for 10 more years. Brock Turner is released after three months. Now, like I said before, now this is hard for me because... <clears throat> I want him to go to jail for longer than three damn months. I want that. I want him to go to jail for as long as the law will want you to go to jail for raping somebody. Say it with me. Brock Turner is... Okay. Tess, I'm not going to keep going. <laughs> and shout out to Ian McQueen. He said, I hope someone runs a fade on Brock Turner every time he steps out of his house. Man, we all do. And if for you don't, if you don't know what that means, a fate is a fight. A fate is an invitation to get your ass whooped. Um, I think, man, you know, it's sad that, that happened. One thing I do like about this scenario is, even though it is an obvious situation, it is an obvious and blatant show of white privilege. White privilege. Really, the um the judge the judge whose name is Aaron Persky, if you want to Google him, it's slander him on Twitter. Um. It said that he actually was a former athlete, like a former college athlete. And being that Brock Turner was an actual athlete as well, they're saying that there might be some type of connection where, kind of like I say, intuitive connection where he's thinking, well, this is a af- this is a kid's an athlete and I know what it's like to rape bitches and leave them in alleyways because all college athletes do that. So let me go a little bit lenient on them. And I hate to leave it that blunt, but... It might be that. It might be that type of situation. Now, you know, to Brock Turner, if I could have him on the podcast, you know, I will. I would. I don't really want him on the podcast because I don't. I don't know. I'm not as mad as him. More than I'm. I'm not so much as mad at Brock Turner as I am mad at the legal system. It's no reason why that man shouldn't have shouldn't have shit. It's no reason why he should have should have walked out of jail after only three months. I'm more mad at the legal system than I'm mad at Brock Turner. I'm mad at Brock Turner. I'm not going to demonize him all the way. I think he's effed up for what he did. You know, I it's it's you really should not fucking rape a girl and leave her in the alleyway, like because my thing my th- I don't know that's just terrible. He ain't getting a job nowhere. I'm gonna tell you that right now. He is not getting a job anywhere. Ain't no, ain't, ain't no McDonald's hiring that boy. He is not, he, he is not getting a job anywhere. That's a wrap for him. I don't know. I want you to tweet me and tell me what you think about that situation. No, I'm just, I'm, 
You know, I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know how to morally feel about it. I just really don't. You know, I, I'm, I just know I'm pissed off. You know, so it is what it is. But I'm stepping outside of that situation. Um, it's the last five minutes of the podcast. I guess I can do the fat boy at a moment for you. Um, uh, let's see. I haven't made anything really of worth. Um, I had a really good chicken sandwich last night. I took two slices of wheat bread. I took some baked chicken and put it in between the bread. I mean, I guess that was good, but it's not something like I would recommend and tell my girlfriend to come over and kick it with me and eat it. You know, I, you know, this is what it is. You know, yeah, I guess today we don't have a fat boy inside of a song moment. But I'm going to tell you right now, this Saturday and Sunday, we definitely going to have one. And you know why? Because it's my freaking birthday weekend. Yeah, buddy. 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 Rolling like a big top. And with that being said, my name is JT. It's been the utmost pleasure having this conversation with you. It's been cool having to having to take the time to get behind the microphone and let you know what's been going on in my life. Um, make sure you like this podcast. Make sure you talk back to me. Make sure you share this with your friends, your family, your sister, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your cousin, your heterosexual lover, your, your homosexual lover, either or. It's been a pleasure having this conversation with you. Um, as always, I'm going to release my late night episode tonight. Or we're going to have the conversation there. And then tomorrow I'm going to have a morning episode. And that's going to be my last episode up until um, Monday. I mean, maybe until Tuesday. Because, well, Monday, you know what I'll do? I'll record one Monday and I'll record it outside. Because I because Labor Day is Labor Day. And I, a lot of the places I need to go to are closed. So I'll just record it outside. So expect the audio to be less than perfect on Monday. Just letting you know that. With that being said, my name is JT. And thank you for tuning in to People's Paradise Podcast. <laughs>